Okay, so I am on page 52 of our workbook. And I'm looking at one of the problems for 5.2.0. And that product, that problem is asking us to use retrosynthetic analysis to propose at least one alkene and set of reagents that could be used to prepare each molecule. Actually, let's look at so yeah, we're going to keep in that problem set, but I'm going to look at a different one than I was thinking about initially. Okay. So now we're going to try and pull some of this stuff together. So uh, I'm going to start out with some of the stuff from alkenes that we learned, right? So I just in the last video lecture, the, the first one I guess that I did, um, we mostly learned about. alkynes and we're going to get to that eventually let's keep things simple and just look at one of these alkene questions and hopefully you can kind of see at least from this example how we're ultimately regardless of what the functional group chapter topic we're on how we're kind of trying to put all these reactions together okay so it's asking about retrosynthesis and the way we use when we talk about retrosynthesis we use this arrow and the arrow implies that we're going backwards in time. Uh, or at least the way we're trying to think about this is going backwards in time. And I would say this is similar to, say, if you were to look at, um, you know, like a chocolate chip cookie. And I were to say, well, I want you to consider how that chocolate chip cookie was made. Okay, so it's the same idea. So in the, in the molecule example, um, We've got a molecule and we're saying, how is this thing made? And, and you know, that's something we're going to get into. If you look at the chocolate chip cookie, though, and you say, how is this thing made? Uh, you know, you, you might say, uh, you know, I don't know exactly what the recipe was, but I can think of at least one. It probably had some egg and some butter, um, sugar. Um, Actually, let's get even more detailed than that with our chocolate chip cookie example. If we're looking at the chocolate chip cookie, we can we can infer. I think our first step would be to infer that this came from some dough. So, started it out as a dough. So I've got some raw cookie dough in there. Um, and before it was a dough, you could say you know probably we started out with. Um, Let's just say we'll end there. We say we had sugar, eggs, butter, flour, baking soda, brown sugar. Um, okay, yeah. So you know this is this is what we're trying to do. So I don't think the cookie example should make some sense to you. You know any kind of thing that you can look at a house and say, how is this built? You can say, well, a house, it started with a slab, and then, you know, obviously I put a frame up, and then I'm going to start putting windows in at some point. You know, you're trying to think backwards about how something might have been constructed, and that's really all we're trying to do with this molecular stuff. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's hard because you're not used to it. But don't convince yourself that you just don't get it, or you're not smart enough to do it, or anything like that. Um, you, your brain has been doing ex what we're doing, we're going to try to do at least, uh, for your pretty much your entire life. Otherwise, you wouldn't have survived to adulthood. It's just the main difference now is that we're trying to apply this logical progression of things that you know uh, to something that's really abstract that you're not familiar with. You know, when I say egg, you can imagine egg. You can imagine what brown sugar is. You can imagine what butter is. You know what dough looks like. You know what a chocolate chip cookie is. You know, when I look at this molecule that I've drawn up here at the top, uh, you know, what are we going to call this thing? It's some big ass. IUPAC name, you know, that doesn't conjure up an image of anything, so it's, it's just more abstract. But the logic is, is really just as simple as something like, you know, trying to infer where a chocolate chip cookie came from. Okay? So, just, I guess what I'm saying is, what I'm trying to do is say, this stuff's hard, but trust me that you can do it, you just have to put in a lot of time and work. So, the propose the way this question is phrased it's saying propose we needed to say that what's one alkene we could have started with 
that could make that we could use to make this product. So what we're saying is we know that we ended up with this product, just like we knew down here that we ended up with a chocolate chip cookie. And here for the molecule, we're asking, well, if we ended up with this and we started with an alkene, what did that alkene look like? Here we can say, okay, we started with chocolate chip cookie. What did the dough look like, right? So the dough for a chocolate chip cookie is gonna look different from the dough that you might use to make bread. Um, and it's the same kind of idea up here. You know, whatever this product is here informs what we started with and uh, it informs the type of alkene that we started with. Okay, what, so this is, this is where sort of the way that I've been trying to get you to learn the, the reaction starts to come into play. If you've been memorizing them in the way that I've been saying, which is um, to think of them in terms of transformation, then what you should think is, okay, I've got, what my brain kind of hones in on is that I've got a bromine here and a bromine there. So what reaction do I know that allows me to go from an alkene to this dibromide? So in my brain, what I'm conjuring up is if I take this and I add in Br2, what I get out is this. So starting with an alkene, adding in bromine allows me to get to a dibromide. So you can see I, if I know things going in this direction, now what I'm trying to do is use that to go backwards when I come back up here at the top. I'm saying, okay, well now I know I have a dibromide. Thus, I must have started with an alkene. This looks a little wonky right here. Thus, I know I must have started with an alkene, and what did that alkene look like? So, um, let me add on a little bit of stuff here, just so it can say that, and put an R group here. So, if we come back down here and look at this, right? the carbons that were part of the alkene ultimately become the carbons that the two bromines are attached to. So I can use this little piece of information when I come back up here and say, okay, these carbons, right, that's the ones with the bromines attached, that must have been where the alkene used to be. And so for some of the questions in the workbook, um, you know, there's more than one different starting material, meaning, you know, whatever you started with, uh, that could potentially be a correct answer. So this is one answer. So if I took this and you could test this, you could say, okay, like if you wanted to practice going in the other direction, you could say, okay, if I add bromine to this, where do I expect it to add? And make sure that it actually takes you to the product that you want. So if we take this and we add bromine to it, we expect it to give us back um, this, or we expect to get out of that the material um, that they're, they're asking us to do analysis on. So that's kind of what retrosynthetic analysis is. It's saying, well, okay, how did I end up here? Um, you know, if, if I, I do, like, it's like I don't have instructions for how to build this thing because whatever, let's just say I lost those. So I'm trying to infer how to build it just from looking at it. Um, and just like with the chocolate chip cookie, you know, in the chocolate chip cookie, I can look at it and say, well, it has chocolate chips, you know, so I must have started with chocolate chips somewhere in there. And we're doing exactly the same thing up in our, in our example. We're saying, okay, well, it's got, it's got bromines in it. You know, I must have used Br2 to get there. Um, it's, it, this is the logic that we're trying to use here, right? Um, so that's what retrosynthetic analysis is. And there are many other book, there are many other examples um, in there. I can do another one real quick. This one's nice. So they're asking, they're saying, I'm, I, I'm, I'm looking at the molecule, you know, like let's say you go into your, your PI's office, you know, wherever your boss is and you're in graduate school for chemistry, um, and they say, I want you to make this molecule from an alkene. You say, okay, how am I going to do that? What could I have possibly started with 
that would give me this. Uh, what I recognize, and actually this 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 one has a lot of different possible um, solutions. You know, the alkene could really be anywhere inside of this molecule, but the one that I'm going to choose is the this. So I could have started with this and added in H2 gas. And that would give me that product. Other more kind of trivial examples that would still be correct uh, in the way that it's phrased in the workbook would be I could start with this. I could really put the alkene anywhere in here and add hydrogen in. And, you know, I don't, <laughs> uh, it is an answer to that question, but I don't think it's the most informative answer. Um, or did I just draw the same product? Oops. Yeah, let's say we could put it there. So all of those would be correct answers, but I think this one is the most informative answer. Um, so yeah, so any of these products combined with H2 would give you what you started with. Okay. Let's do, I'll do one more from there. This one's kind of nice. This one actually only has probably one answer. And this is something I like about this workbook is I know there were some problems with some of you guys getting it and that, that sucks. Um, but I like how open-ended the questions are. I like that there's not like a really firm answer to it. I know it's a little bit more frustrating, but it, I think it causes a lot more thinking and learning, um, which, you know, for me as an, as an educator is the most important thing. I know it can be really frustrating for you guys. So I appreciate the trust that, you know, this is worth it and this is a smart way to think about things. Um, I think you'll remember a lot more stuff if you work at problems like this. Okay, so yeah, so, you know, where could we have started from this? So here we've got two molecules. Um, I can think of a, bunch, a couple of different answers to this, but the obvious one here is that we've got ketones inside of there. So you're thinking, ketone, okay. What reactions do I know to make ketones? That's sort of your logical, that's your logical starting point. I've got these two ketones, or I'm sorry, actually, I've got an aldehyde and a ketone, but I've got these two carbonyl groups in there. What could I have started, you know, what's the, what's the reaction that I know that allows me to do that? And so I do know in a reaction that'll take me between an alkene uh, to a ketone or an aldehyde. Hopefully you know that too. And we can use ozonolysis for that. So if we take this and we add in ozone uh, and then work it up with water, and what I think it's sodium bisulfite, such a, uh, I'm always forgetting my reagents. Uh, yeah, we end up getting a ketone and an aldehyde out of that. So yeah, uh, so now we're trying to think, okay, well, if that's true, then like, what do we start with? And I know that for ozonolysis, what I end up doing right normally is I would slice the molecule in half across the alkene, and then I put oxygens to kind of cap it off. <clears throat> so the molecule that you most likely would start with for this would be, and I'm going to use numbering here. Uh, Let's skip that. Oh, that's not what I wanted. Make it smaller. Make it like that. There we go. Um, I'm going to use some numbering here. We're going to call that one and we're going to call that two. Three, four, five, six, uh, seven.
<sighs> okay. So yeah, so normally, right, we're thinking in the other direction. If you were just given this molecule and subjected it to ozonolysis, so you'd say, okay, I know I just cleave right there. So now you're just you're thinking backwards. You're inferring that if I ended up, if I have ketones, I must have started with an alkene, and you're saying, what did that alkene have to look like? That's what we're trying to do. That's the sort of the sum uh, of what synth synthesis is. And so, you know, we're using examples. I mean, but actually, honestly, by the time we get through the some practice examples with alkynes, we can start maybe. I'll, I'll see what I can find online. We might be able to start actually designing syntheses for drugs. But this is what chemists do when they're trying to make drug molecules. So if you look at some of the drug molecules that are in the news right now, you know, uh, the ones that the WHO are testing against the coronavirus, you know, there are chemists out there using this methodology to, you know, are they at some point, because some of those drugs are pretty old, but they use this methodology to figure out how to make them. And that's sort of the power of organic chemistry is, yeah, we can take and manipulate molecules with, you know, atomic precision and build all sorts of really cool stuff and do things like fight diseases and fight pandemics. I don't know, most of you guys aren't going to go on to be organic chemists, and I'm, I understand that. It's a, it's, a, it's a weird field. It's kind of hard. It's kind of abstract. Um, and I don't think it's a, a flavor that everybody really likes, but a lot of you guys are going out there. You're going to be healthcare workers and stuff like that. Uh, and, you know, this is the, the front line um, of tools that you'll have in your pocket for the most part is going to be, or at least in, in large part, is going to be molecules. And this is sort of an interesting thing. Is how do you make them? Why do you make them? Uh, it's a different story, but how do you make them? Um, okay, anyway, all right, let's, uh, let's end this video because I know these things get, I feel like 20 minutes is kind of the max cap that someone can pay attention to it. And we'll come back and work some more examples in a second.